Hi everyone, this is Bill from Lesson Picks, and today I'm going to walk you through how to create a switch interface that connects an AT switch, one you can buy from AbleNet or a lot of other companies, and connects it to a PC as a keyboard. Now, this is something that you can buy from PRC, AbleNet, uh, Don Johnson, uh, RJ Cooper makes a, a good one at a low cost. You can buy these products, they run anywhere from $100 to $400 depending on the features. And if you're going to use this long term for a lifetime, you're going to want to buy that kind of a product. But if you're trying to figure out if a kid could benefit from a switch or if you need to make a, a switch interface that is specific to the way you want it to work, so maybe more complicated than your basic keystrokes, this gives you a lot of uh, capability in terms of flexibility. The other nice thing about it is it lets you, uh, it lets you get kids in the STEM program or robotics club involved. Uh, with your AT community. This is something that your average robotics student can do. Um, a good robotics student certainly could do. It's a great Eagle Scout project. There's a lot of good uh, uses for this particular approach and it's one that isn't that hard to walk you through. It needs about $20 in parts, some basic soldering skills depending on uh, which um, microprocessor you're going to use. Uh, and, you know, a little bit of wiring and breadboarding skills. It's something that most of your robotics club can do. So I'm going to walk you through it. This is the first of a set of videos on um, our openat.org project. This is a project that I started a few months ago, and it's really aimed towards introducing the people in the assistive technology space to the people in their robotics teams and STEM clubs. Uh, there's a lot of, of uses. We have a lot of people in the STEM clubs who have solutions without problems and vice versa in the AT space. So uh, if you'd like, you, you can get involved with that at openat.org uh, and we'd love to have you there. So let's get started. All right, we've moved into the workshop. This is an area we have uh, where actually I can play a little bit with electronics, kind of my own little mini maker space here. It's on our new facility in Tarpon Springs. Um, and it's a good spot for me to show you um, the finished product and then kind of walk you through the steps to making it. I'm sorry about the echo in here. I don't think there's anything I can do about that. It's a pretty small space. Uh, also, this is my first time filming in here, so forgive any glitches or lighting issues. I'll, I'll do the best I can. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try not to cut here. Just kind of as much as I can, kind of walk through this. So I've got an overhead view here of kind of what we're talking about making. So we've got uh, right here a switch, uh, very generously donated by AbleNet uh, for this project. When we were at Ocali, I saw Jamison Hensley and he uh, was willing to, to part with one of these. This is a very basic switch, right? It's a single pole, single tile switch. It's um, exactly what people think of when they think of an AAC switch. Um, it can be hit with uh, an elbow or a finger or a foot or anything else. It can be mounted on a wheelchair, things like that. Um, you'll notice that on the end of this is a three and a half millimeter, uh, what we think of as an aux cable, right? So a true aux cable, oh, I have one here somewhere. A true aux cable looks like this. Um, so it's actually got what's called the sleeve, the ring, and the tip. And this is um, the uh, ground, this is the left, and this is the right, or that's vice versa, but it's, it's close enough. This is what we think of as a stereo plug. This is basically an old mono plug. This is what the AAC um, switches use, but they are completely uh, interchangeable. You just ignore the ring uh, when, you, when you wire it up. So uh, any, any jack that will accept an aux plug will also accept a um, will also accept a switch and a lot of people think they can plug switches in to the aux plug the mic input on their their pc they can't uh, it won't work so our goal is to be able to plug in this cord and then when the uh, button is pressed um, we'd like that signal to be sent into the gpio pin on this pro trinket now this is a little arduino compatible um, it's $10, it's a great little tool, and it's kind of the core of how this thing works. Um, but when that signal hits uh, this pin, uh, the software that we're going to install on this will trigger um, a keystroke to be sent out on the USB plug that's going to go right here and run to our PC. So it basically turns this combination into a one key, key, one key keyboard. 
So when you hit the button, it's going to generate the letter A. And in this case, if you put the the um, if you put the plug in the other switch, it would generate the letter C. I wired it so that the ring, uh, you know, the the left instead of the right, the the other um, the other wire here uh, would send B and D. So A, B, C, and D can be sent from this one. Turns out that's not very useful because I couldn't find a splitter uh, for cost effectively that would uh, let me combine this to two um, to two switches to more than two switches. But it doesn't it doesn't matter. Today in our example, we're going to walk through one um, we're going to walk through one switch and how to send just the letter A when this button is pressed, which believe it or not is huge. If you can do that for somebody that really can make the difference in uh, their ability to manipulate their environment and to communicate. So that's our goal. I will tell you, we're not going to put, if you look carefully at this, I think you'll be able to see it. Uh, there's actually these little pins right here. Um, they caused us some pain because if you push this top, it'll actually short them out. That's why there's a piece of uh, electrical tape here. So we're going to leave those off. We're not using those headers anyways. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to solder. Uh, these two rows of headers on and then uh, I'll, I'll show you how to, to wire this up. I'll use basic jumpers. I won't bother making it lay out pretty. So I thought I'd show you my uh, soldering setup. Um, I'm not going to use all of it for a couple different reasons, but um, I'll use this camera here. So you'll see I've got a, a, a Weller soldering iron. I've got some uh, foil for brushing off the, the solder tip. And uh, I actually have a fume ex extractor, which is great. It's a fan that uh, sucks the fumes away from your face. Uh, I really kind of have to leave that off because if I turn it on, you won't hear anything I say because it's right next to the mic. So um, some people are really stressed out about the fumes from soldering. Um, there is uh, lead in some solders and that is a, a challenge. Um, but this, the fumes you actually see are rosin burning. It's basically uh, wood sap that actually is inside of the solder. So it's not like we're all going to die if we breathe some solder fumes. It's not pleasant. If I was doing it all day, I'd want the fume extractor on. But I think for this video, I will probably uh, survive. So I have got the uh, my magnifying mirror here uh, in front of me because I'm old and decrepit. Your students, uh, high school students, will not have to have a magnifying glass. They can read these just fine. Um, this is the Pro Trinket, and you'll see that I've got it and the two headers that came with it here. I went ahead and put these uh, on a um, solderless breadboard, which is what we'll use for uh, this project. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the this uh, this chip or this this small board and lay it onto those. Uh, those headers and then I'm gonna go ahead and solder each of these pins and it seems like a lot But once you get started, it doesn't take that long uh, a couple tips on soldering um, You know get a good soldering iron. It makes all the difference in the world. It really does uh, And then if your soldering iron tip looks like that where it's not shiny at the tip It's just not gonna work. Well, so what you actually have to do is it needs to look wet and shiny so you put some solder on it and then Rub it off like this. Now it looks nice and shiny. Uh, you can rub it on some damp cloth here. And now it will conduct the heat well enough to let you solder well. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this soldering iron. I hope you guys can see this. Before I get started, let me make it so you have something close to what I see as well. Kind of hard with this extra camera here, but uh, maybe like that all right that should work so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the the soldering iron and set it to touch both the uh, pin and the pad around it and then I will um, take the solder and bring that to the pin and then I will repeat so just like this just like that that's all there is to it that's one of them and a dozen more and we'll be done. Let's see if I can show you what that looks like when it's done right. Let's 
see if you have enough light to see that. So as you can see, it's kind of like little uh, little dots of uh, solder. They're not touching each other, and it really isn't that hard. It seems very um, intimidating when you look at it and you think, oh, i got to do all these things, but once you get started, it, um, it doesn't actually take that long. Let's see if I can set you up like this. We'll crank through the rest of these. Get this thing to focus for you. There you go. All right, I may fast forward this part of the video, uh, but this really is the only real challenging part uh, of this. I thought I'd speed this up a little bit. Um, it took a while to solder these pads, and actually I made a mistake that I had to go back and clean up, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, soldering does, you know, the best advice I can give you is to slow down and take your time and, uh, and maybe not have cameras in the way. So everything here looks good everything here looks good so just to be completely upfront about what I screwed up and um, and how I fixed it if you look uh, where is it on yours here we go so if you look right here when uh, I was messing with the camera I managed to drop a piece of solder right between these two pads, shorting them out. So I had to spend some time uh, undoing that. To do that, I used uh, something called desoldering braid. And the way that works is you, um, you set the braid on top of the spot you want to remove it from, and then you put the, the soldering iron on it. It sucks it up into it. And that got me almost all the way there. Just to be extra careful, I went ahead and I got a razor knife and um and then i went in and i, I cut down the uh the spot that i was worried about so in general that doesn't happen i have never actually uh tried to do this with a little camera right in my way uh but you know what learning to solder is an important part of stem so uh, i think that it's important that we have kids uh who can do this who can actually make things and uh um, this is, I think, one of the easier uh, tasks as far as soldering goes. So I'm going to pull this off, and now you'll see I've got my board. Um, you can see the soldering is, uh, is pretty solid at this point. And this is now ready to be used to turn the switch into the, um, the keyboard. So let's get started with that. All right, with that done and tested, I actually did run a quick test on the trinket and it looks like my, uh, my soldering errors uh, have not caused any trouble. Um, we're gonna go ahead and set this thing up on the breadboard. So we, you'll notice I've taken it out of the breadboard uh, mainly to move it down. I'm gonna take uh, these pins and I'm gonna put them right at the end. And you'll see they go across this channel here. That means that the, um, the ones, the, if you wanna hook up wires to uh, those pins you, you won't have to actually do any soldering you'll just punch jumper wire down into these holes right the way these work is that um, each of these stripes are connected together so if you put a wire here into the one that says 20 it'll be connected to this pin electrically right so that's the the idea behind uh, behind solderless breadboards is it lets you very quickly set up your your uh, circuit without having to do a lot of soldering in fact we only had to do soldering to get those headers on so um in order to make this work i need to take this jack this is the th three and a half uh, millimeter jack that we talked about and i'm going to place it on the um, breadboard i'm going to place it way down here and it is going to um, expose a number of different pins here You'll see that there's a, a separate one for uh, tip, ring, and sleeve, and that those go into different um, different holes. Each of these has, goes into a different hole on the breadboard. Now there's a little bit of work to figure out exactly um, which of the pins goes to the tip, which is what we need. Uh, the data sheet tells me that. 
um, and I'm going to grab a couple of uh, wires and go ahead and, and hook this up. All right, we're ready to start wiring this up. I've got, um, I don't know if you can see, I've got uh, little jumper wires. These are, are really handy for um, quickly connecting up connections on a solderless uh, breadboard. Uh, you'll notice that when I made the, the one that was going to be used longer, I actually uh, used wires that are cut specifically to the size and I, I, I bent them down so they wouldn't take up much space and they wouldn't move around in the can very much. Um, it's a fine idea, uh, but for testing purposes and for first time purposes, I'll just show you with these. Um, I, I assume cutting wires is something your STEM team can do. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to connect the ground pin of the, uh, of the Pro Trinket which is right here, it's marked with a, a G. So I will connect this one right here to the center pin of the, uh, of the jack right here. So um, the idea is that when the switch is pressed, the uh, pin will be connected to ground. So this is, means that the, the port is usually at five volts and when the switch is hit, it goes to zero. It seems backwards, but in these kinds of chips, it is um, the easier way to do basic switch uh, integration. So I will take the other uh, wire, and I chose green here. Usually black means ground, red means always hot, and all the other colors are, are for signals and things like that. So I will use green and put it on the first pin of the jack here, and then run this to digital pin number three. And the only reason I am choosing number three is that number two is used for uh, the the LED blinking the blinking LED. Um, the some of the others are used for um, UARTs and SPI and things like that. All things that aren't really important here. But this is the entire circuit, right? So let me move it so you can see the whole thing. Um, all that happens here is let me plug in the switch so you can see the whole circuit. All right, so. Uh, when the switch is pressed, it closes the contact in here. So current then flows uh, from the green wire out through the switch and down to ground. And when that happens, this number three pin right here, this digital number three pin, says, oh, I've been signaled, I've been, I've been pressed. And that simple number three pin has been pressed uh, input is all we need to be able to say, oh, send an A. Send an A out the keyboard. All right, the last thing to do here physically is to set up uh, some kind of a container. So if you, if you have a 3D printer at your school or your STEM program does, uh, they can make you a case. In my case, uh, I don't have one, so I just cut some holes in an Altoids tin, and uh, that, that works well uh, given the size of uh, the, uh, the breadboard. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to set up uh, Arduino and uh, walk through how to download uh, the Arduino files onto this to turn it into a keyboard. At this point, we're ready to go and set up this uh, microcontroller to act like a USB keyboard. Uh, to do this, we're not going to start from scratch. We're going to use the Adafruit library that just does this. So I'm going to um, take you to the adafruit.com uh, website. If you go to that site, you can follow the link below. They actually have a, um, a full guide that shows you how to turn a Pro Trinket into a keyboard. Uh, you'll notice that the wiring is very similar to what we did. Um, there is a library that they've written for you that you need to download. You just click the button and it'll install it in your uh, your Arduino library set. Now, I'm not going to go through everything you need to know about Arduinos at this point. Um, assuming that uh, some of this you're going to get through your STEM program, if you don't know what an Arduino is, ask in the forums or, or just Google it. You'll, you'll get all kinds of information. It's basically, um, in this case, we're talking about the Arduino IDE, the development environment for Arduino. It lets you uh, program these microcontrollers uh, and do the kinds of things we want to do here. Um, in the case of the Pro Trinket keyboard guide, you'll notice that uh, there's a library you need to access, and then they've actually got 
examples that tell you exactly how to configure this. So the first example you'll see here says that if pin 12 is activated, it's going to send a letter A. If pin 11 is activated, it's going to send an entire string of text. And it'll go through and explain to you exactly what each line of the program does. Now, I'm not going to try and teach everybody programming. I will tell you this is something that if you read it, you can probably understand it if you're in uh, either a programming class or a robotics club. This is not complicated. It's C++, but it's really straightforward and, and well documented. Um, what this program basically does is it sets up the, the pins. It then pulls the keyboard. This is a function that has to be called every 10 milliseconds or so. So every time the loop runs, it pulls. Then it checks to see, did somebody push the button? Remember we said that the button was going to go low whenever, whenever the button was pressed, the, the pin would go low. Um, they check for that, and if, if it happens, they press the key. They send the, the key, the A key, and then they let go. So they, they hold down the, the A key, and then they let it go. Um, we act, I actually, you'll see that in uh, our guide, it is, there's a slight uh, different version to this. Uh, the only differences are it supports up to four buttons and it doesn't, if you hold down the, the switch, it doesn't um, keep sending A's. And that was just something where in the AAC world, it's too easy to get the double hits. And, and um, if you want to hold down and, and keep sending A's, you can do that. Just disable the part of the program that does that. So what you need to do here is you need to take the, the sketch that is uh, attached to this, uh, this document It'll be right in the, the um, text box below. Copy that, paste that sketch into Arduino, and then follow the instructions uh, on how to push this out to the Pro Trinket. Um, there is a guide, like I said here, on how to do, turn it into a keyboard. There's also a more basic Pro Trinket tutorial that tells you things like, how do I set up the Arduino uh, IDE to push to this device? This is something where if you read this, it's not complicated. It is uh, something I can't spend the entire video on this. If you have questions, our forums are a great place, or you can always find us on Twitter um, or, or just ask me, uh, you know, on the lesson picks, at lesson picks on Twitter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click over to the Arduino. I've already set up my uh, environment. I'm going to turn off the, the Adafruit back there. This is the code that I modified from them. So this is where you'll find the four button version. It's got A, B, C, and D. You'll also see that we keep track of what the last uh, reading was for each pin. So we can get rid of the bouncing and the, the holding down and sending uh, lots of keys. Uh, it's not complicated. You can understand this. You, what you'll need to do to make this work is to take all of this, uh, copy it, and paste it into your own Arduino environment and then hit this button right here, which uploads it to your Pro Trinket. So at this point, we're ready to upload our, our sketch to the Arduino. You'll see I have this blue cord running into the device and I'm gonna plug it into my computer. As soon as I do that, I'm going to upload it uh, using the Arduino IDE. Now, the, the reason I do that quickly is that this device actually switches between uh, being a um, Arduino, uh, being a, a USB client, or pretending to be a, uh, a keyboard. So right after you plug it in, you've got a few seconds where it's willing to take uh, programming. So I will plug this in, and then immediately start sending that down. If you watch in the bottom right, you'll see it's compiling. And now, it should be acting as a keyboard and let's test that all right so i have just brought up a, a notepad a little text editor and you'll see that if i type my regular keyboard in the text editor uh, you'll just see it down there on the right hello hello sorry h-e-l-l-o and now if i press this button it should send an a and it does so now we have fooled the computer into thinking that this interface, along with this switch, is a USB keyboard. 
That doesn't seem like a lot. It doesn't seem like a big win, but it really is. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to take those keystrokes and turn them into something useful. Right? The first thing I'm going to show you is how to switch enable a caribou game. That's just an example. It really is important. If you can give people the ability to send keystrokes, when they hit a button, they can basically control any web page, anything written in JavaScript, anything that, that programmers can write, take keyboard inputs and can act on them. It really is a huge addition to somebody's life if they're locked in or if they really do require the use of these switches. Thanks for your time and make sure you check out openat.org and join us.